Howdy folks, Jake here with the Banjo Bin General Store once again, and today we're going to be putting spikes in banjos. So, what's more fun than taking a hammer and driving a nail right in a banjo? If you've got something then uh, that you know about, share it with us, because I don't know what could be more fun than that. <laughs> um, real quick, for those of you who don't know what spikes, uh, the purpose of them is they're a little capoing device for the fifth string. And the reason you need that is to compensate uh, if you do capo the normal four strings because the fifth string is shorter. So in other words, if I capo on the second fret, I would also have to come up two frets from the fifth string tuner and capo there as well. And as you can see on this one, I've already put spikes in at seven, nine, and 10, which would be A, B, and C. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead to show you guys how to do it because it's the same on every fret. We're gonna put a spike in here at the B flat, which would be at the eighth fret. So uh, I'll just kind of talk through the tools you need as we do this. First off, I have just my trusty old number two pencil, and I'm just gonna mark about where I want the fret, or the, I'm sorry, the spike to go, and I just make me a mark all the way out to the edge of the fretboard there, if you can see that. And uh, you do have to be careful uh, when you're doing positions that have inlays, you have to kind of work around those. Uh, so like you don't wanna put it right in the middle, because when you drill into it, you can literally eject that inlay, depending on how far in it goes. <laughs> So we wanna avoid that. If you do it like on the seventh fret, you can see I move just to this side of the inlay so it doesn't hit this position marker. Okay, so once we've got our dot there, uh, the next thing I do is I take a little finish nail, like so, and I'm gonna rest it against the string. I'm gonna to try to do this, bear with me on the camera, folks, because I'm having to work around it so you can see here. So I'm gonna put it on my mark, rest it against the string, just slightly, Give it a slight lean back toward me. Give it a nice little tap -a And that's gonna give me a little pilot hole to start my drill in. I don't know if you can see that there. Camera's having a hard time focusing. Let's back it up a little bit. There you go. Okay. So what that's gonna do is like I said, give me a little, so once I got that started, I'm gonna kinda Widen it out just a little. And the only thing this does is it makes it easy to get my uh, drill bit started because I've got to pre-drill this hole. So uh, another thing to note, whenever I line all these up, I, use, I keep the fifth string in place and I use that as a guide. And if we come right up over the top of the strings here, you'll see that that hole that I just punched in or just started along with the, all the other ones set right above the string. That's what we want. That'll hold the string the most securely. It'll give the string the most amount of spike head to slip under. And uh, when it is under it and rested against the post, it'll keep the string in the straightest line possible uh, to minimize sharpness and things like that. I've seen some spike jobs where people move them way in and it bends the string when you put it um, under the spike and we wanna kinda avoid that. So once we're this far, I go ahead and take my string off, just pop it loose like that. Then I'll take my Dremel bit, which what I'm using here, let me show you, I've actually got some set aside because I did a video like this in the past for another place I worked for, and this was a big question that I didn't answer. Uh, you can buy this little kit at most stores. I got this at Walmart, and the only one you want out of this is this 132nd bit right here. And also for your Dremel, if you don't have it, you need to get a set of these little collars. And you, you'll need to use the small one, wherever it's at here. Yeah, one like this. So it'll tighten down on that little bit. In other words, if you have just a big open one like this, it ain't gonna work. So I've already got mine set up like that. That's a fairly straightforward process. So let me clear all this stuff out of the way real quick. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do here, and I, I may not be able to show this too well on camera, but I'll try to explain it the best I can, is I'm gonna take my uh, little drill bit, and uh, you can, I, I get up on my elbows over it, and I kinda use my chin as a guide. <laughs> I know it's kind of a stupid way to do it, sort of, but it works really well for me. And I'm gonna let rest uh, this bit right there, um, 
And, and what I'm trying to do here, I'll, I'll explain it before I do it because once I start, I can't really talk about it too much. I've got to concentrate on doing it. But uh, whenever I go in at an angle, I want to go in barely at an angle. In other words, I don't want to go straight up and down. I want to go slightly like this, um, where I'm going at an angle more into the fingerboard instead of straight down. I'm kind of going this way. And that's going to do two things. It's going to keep the spike in place better. The string tension will be way, way, way less likely to be able to pull it out over time. And uh, it's also going to uh, help the geometry of the, uh, the angle of the open end of the spike for getting the string under it and things like that. So here we go. Let's turn your bit on at a low speed. Get up over it and get it started in there. And just very gently let it work its way in. Keep kind of backing it up to keep that hole clean. All right, then we should have a blank canvas started for painting our spike masterpiece. Sorry if you can't hear me, I'm moving around. All right, next thing's next. I'm trying to go quick here, folks. But I'm trying to be thorough too. We're gonna take our fifth string spike. It's gonna look like this, little railroad spike nail, literally a model train. And we don't typically want these the full length, and I don't like having the little sharpened tip. I'll cut them off flat. And that's an old carpenter's trick, a framer's trick that I learned years ago. If you cut the tip off of a nail and to drive it in a board, you're not near as likely to uh, split the, the wood. And that shouldn't be too much of a consideration on this one because we've already got the uh, pilot hole in place. So you don't really have to worry too much about splitting it but it's just an extra precaution. Okay, so once we have our spike kind of shortened down, looks something like this, kind of a flat head on it now. I'm gonna take just a regular file and I'll just kind of hold this loosely in my fingertips and strop it back and forth. And then like so, try to get it from all angles, just dropping it back and forth on this file. That works off all the little burrs. It helps it go in a little easier. It makes it not quite as likely to turn because when you drive this in, sometimes they want to twist. When you go in, you have to keep them straight. Okay, we're getting there. So now there is, all there is to it is we take our punch. Just a little punch like this works great. A little dead blow hammer of some sort. And I use a 12 thousandths gauge uh, because that's uh, about as thick as any fifth string you'll ever put on. Um, you can use a 13 or 14,000. And this is an old fret, uh, I'm sorry, a nut file, a nut saw, they called it. Um, you can use like a spark plug uh, gauge and all kinds of things. Uh, if you have nothing else available, literally a credit card could work. Um, although it wouldn't be my first option, but you know. Sometimes, as my dad used to say, poor men have poor ways. So you use what you can, and I'll show you what to do with that in a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get this spike started in its hole there, like so. And then we're going to put our punch on it and lightly uh, tap it in so it can find its, its hole there. And you might be better coming around this side, come over to the other side of me. Sorry, folks, we're going to make a camera adjustment. Oh. I'll have my right hand out of the way in a minute. I just knock that over. Everything's harder to do on camera, I promise. Okay. So we got it kind of basically started. You're going to rest your punch on there kind of lightly work it into its hole and you see it kind of drop there. And before I drive it on home, I take this and straighten it up. Then I'll take my feeler gauge. That way it doesn't go down too far, so far that you can't access the strings. And I hold it in place with my ring finger as well as, um, you can kind of see the configuration of my fingers there. I just kind of hold everything in place like that. 
Then I just seat that spike on down, just like so. Just like it was made for it. And once you get it down there, you can, that came, that went in pretty straight. So you don't need to do a whole lot to that. Kind of feel it with your test gauge. You should have just a little bit of grab. When you push it in, see it grabs just a little and sticks out. That's just about perfect. And then we're all done. We're gonna run this string back up to tension. If I can get a hold of it. <laughs> And then we just test our spikes. We go through them one at a time, push it under, it's easy. It should make a clear sound without interfering with this spike. You want the, that's one thing I didn't mention, which if you use the correct uh, size gauge, like a 12 or 13 thousandths, it should be an issue anyway. But if you're using something like a credit card that's less precise, you wanna make sure that the head of this railroad spike nail is below the height of your frets. That means when you note it, or spike it, you're gonna get clear tones all the way up. So this is the one we just did. Good. These are the ones we already did. Good. Good. And if you do it right, if you sight down the string, you'll see they're all even because we use the string as a guide. So the post of the spike, in other words, the, the if I can show you here, you see that? This piece that you drive in, this long piece here, sits just above the string where it goes into the wood. And they all go in at a slight angle this way, very slight. And anyway, that's ideal. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. Mine isn't the only way. Uh, some people too like to take a little piece of 400 grit, grit sandpaper, fold it in half and work it between the spike and the fingerboard to smooth off any burrs. Depending on what kind of spikes you have, that may be necessary. It's not with the kind of spikes I use, they're very nicely finished. So um, anyway, I think that'll probably have you folks about set. I've had lots of requests to do this video, so I uh, hope I didn't leave anything out. If I did, uh, shoot us an email and I'll, I'll try to answer any other questions you have. And like always folks, we greatly appreciate you. Thanks for watching.